awesome. This man is very funny. Please put your hands together. We're on stage with the James Masters. Make some noise. Give it up. Hello, oh, everybody. How are we doing? Pretty good. And just one guy answering. That's that's enough. That's all I need. Uh, that's cool. Um, hey, guys. Uh, I want to tell you this. I got a phone call the other day uh, from this lady, right? And she goes, uh, hi, this is Deborah from Tiles or Us. I have your tiles. And I said, I didn't order any tiles. And she said, yes, you did. And I said, no, I didn't. And she said, yes, you did. I'm looking at them right now. And I was like, no, fucking Deborah. I guarantee you I've never ordered any tiles in my damn life. And she goes, wait, is this Melissa? <laughs> huh? I was like... So like, no, Deborah, this isn't Melissa. Um, you've got the wrong number, I think. And uh, she said, I'm sorry, and she hung up. And at that point, I thought Deborah was out of my life, right? But then I, I get a call like 10 seconds later. Guess who it was? Yeah, it was Deborah. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Uh, it was Deborah, um, and she said, um, hi, is Melissa there, right? Now, what I should have said was, no, you just called the same wrong number, duh, right? But what I did say was, yeah, this is Melissa. Where are my bloody tiles? I made it more manly. Because <laughs> I'm quick. <laughs> um, guys, it's good to be here. Uh, hey, one of the best things about being a comedian, though, is you get to, uh, you get to travel a lot, right? And, and do shows, uh, which is really good. I was in America last year doing a little bit of comedy. Who's been to America here by a round of applause? Yeah, a few of you. Uh, yeah, it's good in America, right? Uh, I find people are very sweet, but when you leave the big towns in America and go to, like, the small towns, the vibe really changes. Like, they're still very sweet, but you just get this vibe like none of them have ever really left those little towns, you know? Like, and like, I was doing this show in Washington State, right? And I came off stage, and uh, this guy comes up to me. This is in June, right? And uh, he goes, oh, it must be hot as fuck in Australia right now, hey? Because it's hot there. And I was like, no, it's actually winter in Australia right now, man. And he's like, what? And I was, I was like, yeah, dude, the seasons are reversed, right? So when it's summer here, it's winter in the southern hemisphere. And he goes, ah, so uh, what month is it there? <laughs> That's the kind of people you get in small town America, so good for them. Um, but hey, look. They don't have the monopoly on crazy people, right? Like we, I was in Tasmania uh, last weekend. Who's been to Tassie before? Yeah, all right, that's a fun place. Uh, did you clap? You're my go-to for the, for the purpose of the, No, you didn't clap? Did you, someone, yeah, okay, so you've been. Do you think this is true? Because I've, I've only been there once and it was like a week ago. Is there more bogans per head of capita in Tassie or is it, was I just lucky? Yes, okay. Because um, that's what I found, right? I, I met some crazy, like, hard men, right? But then this one guy, this is the craziest. One guy is about my age, which is 30, right? And his girlfriend was 18, right? And I was like, yeah, that's fine. And I was like, oh, how long have you guys been together? And he's like, oh, a year or two. And I was like, is that okay? Like, legally, is that okay? And he's like, yeah, in Tassie, you're allowed to sleep with a 17-year-old. And then he, like, there's this perfect comedy beat. And he goes, has to be consensual, but... Uh, yeah, I know, like, that's the main law that holds our society together, you know, like, who do you normally hang out with who would consider that valuable information, you know, like, so, so, but check out the art museum, it's very beautiful, um, so, that's Tassie, guys, um, I, um, I've had a good, I'm fairly new to Melbourne, um, uh, still trying to figure the, uh, tram system out, uh, you ever take a tram, lady? Yeah, me too. Um, but I'm but I'm crap at it, right? Uh, like there's so many rules on the tram, right? Like uh, you got to touch on and then touch off sometimes. I'm still not super clear on when. And then uh, another one is you got to get up for old people, right? Which is a good rule. Like do the rule. But I keep getting in a situation where the old person is like right on the cusp. You know what I mean? Like on one hand, you don't want to stay seated and have everyone hate you, right? But you also don't want to get up and risk offending someone who might not think. They're old, right? So I got in that situation the other day and I fucked it pretty bad. Uh, I, I said, oh, excuse me, madam, would you care for my seat? And she said the most interesting thing. She said, um, I'm a man. So, 
messed that up pretty bad. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, trams are cool. Uh, was anyone here following the World Cup this year? No one? No, no soccer fans? Not a one in like 40 people. Okay, whatever, that's fine. Uh, you don't need to have done that to get this joke, to be fair. So uh, I... Um, <laughs> But I, I like the World Cup, right? But I find I really enjoy following soccer in Australia because for some reason, I guess we're not a traditional soccer nation and soccer seems to annoy old people for some reason, right? Like, I don't know why, but I was on a tram and uh, there was this old guy in like a Collingwood beanie, this is during the World Cup, and this kid gets on in a Brazil jersey, right? And you could tell old man Collingwood wasn't on board, right? Like, he kept pointing at the guy and, like, appealing to the rest of us, right? Like, going, oh, look at this cunt. Like, we hated him as much as he did, right? And then, finally, he pipes up and he goes, what's all this bloody soccer crap, mate? That's not real football. Play real football, right? And I like that guy because he's so competitive that it's not enough for his favourite team to beat the other teams. He needs his favourite sport to somehow beat the other sports, you know, like, he won't be smiling until the AFL takes over all the poof to sports and Collingwood wins Wimbledon, you know, he's, he's a crazy man, I don't know, but, uh, I don't know, guys, I, um, I, uh, I hate taking taxis, though, that's the alternative for me, right, like, uh, you ever take a taxi? <laughs> yeah, sometimes you've got to take a taxi. And uh, that's, that's, that's the worst, right? Because uh, I, I always just get stressed out watching the numbers tick over. You know, like, I've never got out of a taxi feeling like i got a sick deal. You know, like, but, but, uh, and also the taxi driver, he wants to talk to you, but it's never small talk. Like, you've just met the guy, but he'll go deep straight away, right? Like, this, I had this, this guy, he was like this crazy Russian guy the other day, and he wanted to talk to me about, uh, like, my career and my love life and my politics, right? He found out I was a stand-up comedian, um, because I told him, that's how I found out. Um, very cunning of him. But um, then he like starts telling me all these jokes, right? And I don't understand any of them. And uh, I was just sort of laughing out of politeness and shit. And then he wants me to tell him a joke, right? And you guys have probably already noticed I don't have any jokes, right? <laughs> my, my act is just a list of complaints, basically. Um, so this is the joke I told him. It's like not my joke. I, I heard this on a talk show. But this is the joke I went with for this guy. Uh, a moth flies into a podiatrist's office and says to the podiatrist, I'm in a terrible way, man. My moth wife is cheating on me. My moth kids don't respect me. I hate my bloody moth job and I need help, right? And uh, the podiatrist says, well, that sounds terrible, but uh, sounds like you need a psychiatrist. Why'd you fly in here? And the moth says, oh, the light was on. Right? <laughs> so that's the joke I told him. It's a pretty stupid joke, right? You guys, I would say, are laughing too long at it. Um, but the taxi driver, right, loses his fucking mind, right? He was laughing so hard for, like, I would say a solid 30 seconds. He was losing his mind, right? And finally, oh, I'm starting to get uncomfortable, right? And then finally, he calms down and he waits again, like a perfect comedy beat. And he goes, eh, eh, tell me, uh... What is moth? <laughs> so I, I don't know why I was laughing, but I was saying about that joke that he loved. And hey, look, you guys have been a great audience. I gotta go, but enjoy the rest of your evening. Cheers. Woo!